This podcast is sponsored by ServiceNow. Behind every great experience is a great workflow. ServiceNow delivers digital workflows that create great experiences and unlock productivity for communication service providers and their customers. Welcome to the sponsored edition of the Light Reading Podcast. This is Phil Harvey. I'm joined on the podcast today by Chris Bauschka. Chris is the general manager and AVP of the global telecommunications, media, and technology industry segment of ServiceNow. On this show, we'll get Chris's views on where he sees opportunities for telecom and cable operators to stand out, especially as um, businesses open back up and we kind of uh, reemerge from uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, and uh, the economic you know, difficulty that's preceded that. Um, and get into this new normal. Um, he talks about the need for digital transformation, what that really means for telecom operators. He discusses how they can achieve operational savings and also uh, offer things like proactive customer service that really will make a difference and uh, set them apart competitively. Uh, we will get into all of that right after this break. Chris Bauschka, thanks so much for joining me on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, Phil. Great to be here. So we're talking about um, you know the state of uh, telcos in general, the telecommunications business, and it's gone through. Uh, well, first of all, it held up really well during the uh, initial surge of home workers and changes in traffic from uh, COVID nineteen, but uh, it's also been going through even before that was was already going through quite a huge transformation um, from uh, you know soft w- brought on by software defined networking brought on by network functions virtualization and all of those buzzwords uh, point being the infrastructure itself is changing it's required to change so we can get to 5g and uh, and and of course, you know, companies are are investing in their networks so they can provide 5G service. Um, I guess my first question for you is, are we in some kind of, uh, are we headed towards some kind of new normal in telecommunications? I think that's right. As you rightly point out, Phil, the trend around transformations, rolling out n- networks, driving out operating costs that we saw in 2019 and before those challenges have not gone away. We're still faced with those challenges in terms of how do we roll out those next generation networks? How do we continue to reduce the operating costs, for instance, especially now with the slowing economy? I think as well, this COVID-19 experience that we've all gone through is also creating new opportunity. It's, It's made us all step back and realize maybe we do need more flexibility going forward. Maybe we are moving to a digital experience as a world even faster than we thought we were. And yeah. I think from a CSB perspective, as we come out of this crisis, it's just, it's an unbelievable opportunity for them to be leaders in this new connected world, as well as to continue to drive that efficiency that's going to be needed in this new world. Yeah. And you know, it, it as you mentioned, efficiency and kind of cutting cost out of this, out of the, uh, the whole process of providing services to consumers has long been a telco, um, uh, you know, rallying cry. (laughs) And I think, you know, part of it is, you know, even with the downturn in the economy, obviously that's a motivation, uh, you know, brought on by the pandemic. But the other motivation was the the evolution to 5G, the kind of the realization that customers are going to demand this higher quality of Mm -hmm. service, but they're not going to pay that much more for it. And so the way to do that and increase your profits, you've got to drive uh, cost out of the network everywhere you can. So how do telecom operators drive that cost out of the network? What's one way they can do that? I think that's right. So in my experience, driving an improved experience and taking out significant operating costs, they often actually go hand in hand. And the most successful transformations that I've seen actually do both simultaneously. If you think about how you create that great experience, how you deliver on that 
digital and optimized experience, not only from a customer perspective, but also from your own and agents and your own not personnel, for instance, as you're delivering on that experience, what that often means is it's easier, it's simpler, there's actually less steps, there's actually less phone calls going on through the organization um, as you do that. There's actually quite a bit of call deflection as you give your customers, both the consumers and the enterprise customers, more options in terms of channels to connect you. And those those strategies tend to actually drive operating costs down quite a bit. So it's not just about kind of wringing those last cents, you know, out of your network operations. It's about being smart about how you reimagine the experience and in so doing actually significantly reduce the operating costs further. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think you were, um, uh, you know, talking about in, in this area was, and this, this, uh, stuck out to me because the telecommunications business as from the consumer side has always been one of, of, uh, waiting and reacting, um, you know, sitting on hold and waiting and, and, you know, doing things and having, having to get the, uh, the note that says, okay, we'll be to your house in, in a week, you know, to fix something you, you, you've actually, you know, captured my attention by talking about a proactive experience. So how do service providers get into this, you know, uh, get it, get onto this path of providing a proactive experience when I assume all of these things you just mentioned, the knock all the way down to the customer are somehow linked together. That's exactly right, Phil. So I think where the world is going and what customers are asking for is very much this proactive experience. What we mean by the proactive experience is this idea of instead of that customer needing to call the agent to find out where they are with an outage or a change, or an agent, for instance, needing to call the network operations team to see where we are with an outage, instead of that more reactive experience where we're reacting to customers, instead, we're moving as a world to a proactive experience where the CSPs are anticipating those issues. They're actually communicating with customers proactively where there is an outage or communicating proactively in terms of the update on a network change, for instance. The real question here, Phil, is, how do you deliver? How do you actually create that proactive experience? And in our experience as ServiceNow, the only way you can create that proactive experience is actually connecting that world of the customer and the care organization that supports them, connecting that world to the world of network operations, making it easier for the customer themselves and the care organization to have the actual context of the network, the outages, the alarms, the troubles, the steps you know, for resolution. And obviously, while you're not going to expose all that detail, nor would you from a not perspective, you have to provide enough simplicity and insight that actually flips that entire experience to proactive. And I'll just kind of have one more comment here, which is what, what we've seen with operators around the world that we work with, when you are able to pivot to that proactive experience, going back to your previous question on cost, it actually significantly reduces the cost because now you're actually reducing the the calls, right, coming in to the, the contact center and, and all the call handle times and all the steps the agents have to go through. If you can avoid all that through just notifications, it's an incredible driver to cost efficiency. Yeah, I can totally appreciate that because once you, as the customer, once you're aware of that, you know, you know that they know there's a problem <laughs> and once you're comfortable with that and once, you know, they've given you some sort of uh, idea of what happens next, I think that's what a lot of these calls are about, mm -hmm. you know, is just, hey, there's a problem and what happens next. Yeah, and I think I think also just what we as customers care about, whether you're an enterprise CIO or a consumer, what you really want is you want your problem solved. Yes, you yep. want a nice digital experience. Yes, you want it simple. But at the end of the day, you really want your problem solved. And the only way that the CSP can really solve that, that problem in a, in a fast and efficient and right the first time way is to actually connect to operations, to actually connect to the people that are solving the problem. And if you're able to do that in a more straightforward, easier way, that it drives costs, but it also creates a much richer experience for that customer. <laughs> so how is uh, ServiceNow, uh, well, two-part question, how is ServiceNow addressing that, uh, that that very issue right now? And then the second part would be, um, you know, kind of why aren't we seeing this already happening in uh, the traditional telco OSS, BSS uh, infrastructure? Sure. So I'll take that first 
part and maybe answer that first part and then we can get to the second part. Okay. Um, so I'll talk about just how do we think about this problem at ServiceNow. And I'll say that this is absolutely our mission. We're looking at this problem in terms of how do we create that that amazing experience, that proactive experience, that connected experience for the CSPs? How do we go shoulder to shoulder with those CSPs as they're doing their service transformations and make that happen? So how are we thinking about solving that problem at ServiceNow? The way that we think about it is from a ServiceNow cloud platform perspective, we have the customer connections. So we have the, the service platform, the connections to the channels, the ability to connect directly into, for instance, an enterprise customer's environment as well. So we have that, that customer connection, but maybe what is also little known about ServiceNow is we actually have the infrastructure connection as well. We have on that same cloud platform, we're actually able to represent the network services, the network devices, the alarms and events that are coming in from the network monitoring systems. We actually have an incredibly robust um, set of capabilities around the context of the network itself. You put those two aspects together, the customer context and then the network and alarm and chains context together, now you've actually got the data, you've actually got the information um, that if organized and structured and 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 put into workflows in the right way, you've now got all those building blocks to resolve those incidents, resolve those alarms, communicate to the customers, create connections to the care organization. And we believe as, as a company that we have this incredible potential to, as we've been talking about, completely shift the experience to a, an experience that is much more pleasant for the customers, getting those those alerts and notifications, and then resolving those, those network issues and network changes in a much more timely way. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic, especially um, you know these days when we're so so much more dependent on broadband and other services that we get from telcos. You know, they're they're more than ever they're our lifeblood, <laughs> and the 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 thing that almost all of our business and entertainment activities kind of depend on. So yeah, any any improvement in that is going to be um, not just I, I would say not just probably drive out cost to the network in terms of lower calls, but also drive customer satisfaction way up. Yeah. I, you know, I think about it as actually a competitive differentiator for the CSPs themselves. This is something that they can market. This is how they can take share in the communication space. This is how they can go to market as an MSP, for instance, in the enterprise space is just, you know, we're differentiated because we can offer you this more direct connection and this more proactive experience compared to our competitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anytime you give the, uh, the service providers a way to, um, you know, add to their current business, that's also a good, a, a good bonus as well. So t two more sort of quick things, uh, and then, and then we'll wrap up. Um, first of all, are, you know, I know the service now portfolio, the, the different workflows you have in different industries. I know you're already engaged with a bunch of telco customers for all kinds of different things is, are, are there telcos out there are using bits and pieces of this already? And maybe you could give us a bit of detail there, and uh, and then and then uh, uh, the last thing would be, you know, do you have any advice for for uh, CSPs uh, who are, uh, you know, what's like one piece of advice you could leave them with? Absolutely. So let's take this first part in terms of what operators are doing with ServiceNow. So, you know, we're very fortunate ServiceNow while we're building these telecom specific products now and taking those to market. We just announced the new telecommunications products. While we're doing that this year, the extensions that we're making are actually on platform components that have been rolled out to operators all around the world for a number of years. We have a number of operators that are using ServiceNow today in their core business, both from a customer service and customer care perspective, managing those customer relationships and those customer experiences, and also managing the knock itself, you know, in service, in service assurance use cases, managing the network operations. I can give just a, a quick few examples if that makes sense, Bill. Um, you probably heard on my telecom keynote yesterday, you probably heard um, interviewing Maria Grazia um, Pecorori from BT Global. They have a massive service transformation that they're doing that they call Digico that is all based on ServiceNow in terms of creating a much more intimate relationship with their enterprise customers in BT Global. Um, if you look at what Telia is doing, for instance, in Sweden, they've standardized on service now from both a consumer care as well as a enterprise care perspective. And we talked about cost takeout and creating a better experience. They've done both. They shifted 
40% of their case volumes onto the self-service channel. And as you can imagine, that's a much better experience for consumers and customers to be able to use that portal as opposed to the phone calls. But then you can imagine the cost takeout of 40% of your call volume goes into the self-service channel. Um, I also mentioned just one more, which is Tata Communications in India, who is standardized on service now from a knock and service assurance perspective. So in their case, they've been able to reduce network incidents by 26%. Another great example of applying the technology of ServiceNow into the actual network operation space to manage the core network itself. Mm. Wow, those are um, uh, not insignificant in terms of customer size and customer reach. So you guys are taking on, um, in various ways, a bunch of uh, uh, really large projects with, uh, you know, that that ultimately reach, you know, mil- I would say millions of customers, right? Absolutely. Mm. Well, that's good. So you must have some uh, advice for CSPs who are uh, looking at how they can become more proactive, not cost out of their operations. Uh, what would what would you leave them with? Yeah, I would just open it up and kind of ask some some pretty big questions here. And and I think the opportunity for CSPs going forward is so massive. And let's just recognize, Phil, you opened up this podcast talking about we're in this new world. We're in this new normal. I see it exactly the same way. As I think about it. What is the future going to look like? What will we have industry trade shows? Will we travel? Will there be concerts? There's all these questions up in the air. I know for my family, I have daughters that are in middle school and high school. I think about, well, what is the college experience going to look like in the coming years? What is that even going to look like? And I think just as CSPs, they've got such an amazing opportunity to reinvent the world for this digital experience. I know last year you also kicked off the podcast talking about 5G and how the focus last year was very much on rolling out 5G and the business case for 5G. I think this is it. This is the business case for 5G. And I think the communications industry has this just unbelievable opportunity to show us all the way. What is the way into this new normal and using yeah. communications to really reinvent a lot of these experiences that we'll have into the future? Mm. Here, here. I, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I do, uh, I do, I am a firm believer that we will uh, uh, have uh, that better customer experiences will also translate to, you know, a better uh affinity for, you know, the network providers and the services they provide. And uh, also I do believe we'll have podcasts in the future. So I'm, I'm certainly glad we're recording this one and I'm certainly uh, glad to, uh, to speak to you today, Chris. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you so much, Phil. It's been such a pleasure to uh, be part of your podcast today. That is it. That's our show. Thanks so much to Chris Bauschke for his time and insights today. Thanks very much to ServiceNow for sponsoring this podcast. This is a sponsored uh, production. And uh, we also thank our producer, Tian Fu, because if it weren't for him, you wouldn't be able to hear any of this. Um, And we uh, want you to please tell a friend to subscribe. We're on uh, Spotify. We're on Apple Podcast. And we're on Google Podcast and dozens of other podcast platforms. Thank you very much for listening to this sponsored edition of the Light Reading Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by ServiceNow. Behind every great experience is a great workflow. ServiceNow delivers digital workflows that create great experiences and unlock productivity for communication service providers and their customers. 